creature baits have soared in popularity in recent years and we're out on one of my rivers today with the Fox Rage Critter and we're going to go through all the tips, tactics and how I use them to put really good fish on the bank. So the, uh, the critter is based on a crayfish that we find in many of our rivers and it's a staple diet for all predatory species, you know, zander, perch, pike, chub, they all love them. Even if your rivers don't have crayfish in them, I believe that the action that they have, the perch just find irresistible anyway, they just have to attack it. And the thing I personally love about creature baits is how hard the perch hit him when you get a bite. Whether it's because they're trying to disable them quickly um, because of the big claws they have, um, whatever it is, it's an absolute buzz. And that's exactly what we're trying to provoke here. That, that reaction from a fish that it just can't, can't let that bait get away from it. You know, it's full of nutrition, full of protein. It, you know, it's absolutely perfect for these big fat perch. And now we're gonna take a closer look at these critters to see what makes them so unique. Well, the first thing you'll notice is all the appendages, all the little legs. Underneath, you've got these little bristles here and the long, the long claws. All of those add absolutely masses of vibration to the lure under the water. So as that drops through the water, those front claws have a lovely swimming action. So all the way down, it's swimming. And then it won't take much movement at all to get that lure going again. So most of my fishing is done weedless and with these critters you've got a lovely little hook slot there so when you pull that hook back through you've got a little recess to put it in. It stops that getting caught up with anything on the bottom, any weed, debris, anything like that. But what makes these great is they've got a nice chunky body so it handles a jig head perfectly. So the way I've been fishing today and pretty much my go-to setup for critters is um, fishing it with a cheb and that's this little weight here. So basically you're going to thread, take the weight off the clip inside it, thread a hook on, making sure that the um, point is upwards of that little ring. Thread the weight back on, like so, and there you have the weight and the hook that's free moving. Then it's just a case of hooking the critter. So if you turn the critter upside down, Go in the back of the critter and come through about five, six mil, something like that, and pierce the pierce, pierce the uh, body like that. So it's just nicked in the tail end, and you bring it all the way around the shank of the hook to the little keeper. Turn it upside down at that point until it comes up onto that bit. That way the hook is laying level with the uh, with the critter. Then line it up on the back. Work out where the point's going to go through and just push it through. And that should, with a, with a 3.0 hook, come right at the end of that, of that recess, like so. So that's the 9cm critter there on a 3.0 hook and a 5 gram, 5 gram weight. If it's not too weedy, I'll leave it like that. But if it's really weedy, you can just nick that point back into the plastic, just a tiny bit, just a mil or so, and that will make that completely weedless then. You can pull it through anything. And as soon as the perch bites, it reveals the hook point and you can set the hook. There are certain times when the cheb does get a little bit caught up though. Not the hook itself, but the actual weight. And that's when the Texas rig comes in. So what we're going to do is hook this weedless. So we go in through the tail end again. Five, six mil, nick that bottom end of that. Thread that hook on, round onto the bend. So the hook, the hook is now underneath the lure. Then we're going to measure up find out where that bend and that point's going to go through, go through the plastic and hopefully that's spot on, come up exactly where that, that little hook recess is. You can see that just disappears into that, into that recess there. Again just nick the point in so it's completely weedless. So now you're left with a hook and a lure 
and a Texas weight, which is a, a cone shaped weight, which is streamlined at one end and slightly bulbous at the other. Now, personally, I like to fish these um, unpegged, which means you don't put any stoppers on the line. So thread the weight on, so it's running free up your, up your main line. Then tie a hook on. With fluorocarbon, a, a four or five turn blood knot is fine. So we go one, two, three, four, one for luck. Back through the loop. If I can do it. There we go. Always moisten your knots. Bed that down nicely. Trim the end off. Then your weight sits right up against that, like that. It almost continues the shape of the lure. And that's great for really, really, really heavy cover. If you've got roots and things like that you want to get in, that's perfect for that. And it's also great bite indication because it's free running, you get a better bite with this. As an option as well, you can put a glass bead in there. So when every time you pull that down, that makes a, makes a rattling noise. And that can be really good to attract the perch and other predators. If you're fishing a, a venue that doesn't have a lot of weed or snags, um, and you want to fish just a standard jig, that's absolutely fine. And the great thing about the critter is it's got a chunky enough body that you can get a jig in there really well. So before you thread the hook on, if you just lay the hook next to it and weigh out where it's going to come out. With this, it's just in this little shoulder here on the critter. So we thread that in, try and get it all central. Work it down until that hook point comes somewhere near that shoulder that we just measured up. Nice and central, there we go. Thread it on, and there we go. And that's hooked lovely, that is. And with that, you'll get great, great hookup ratios because the point is always showing. An often overlooked method for the uh, for the creature baits is um, the drop shot. Um, I do this a lot for Xander, to be honest, where you can uh, you can create a lot of action in the lure but not move it very far. Um, and for that, we need a length of fluorocarbon. So um, take about a metre of fluorocarbon and double it up to make a massive loop. So you've got a loop like that. Take your two tag ends and thread both of them through the eye of the hook. Like so. So you've got double the length of uh, fluorocarbon coming through the hook. Take them up to your loop end. Sorry, there we go. Up to the loop end like that. So that's what you've got at the minute. You've got a hook, just move that. hook and a loop. And all you're going to do is tie a single overhand knot. So just one loop, one turn, and that's what you're left with. So you've got a hook in that double that single overhand knot, and then all you're going to do is put the hook through the remaining loop that's there. And cinch it all down with a bit of moisture. Like so. Pull it tight. So what you're left with is when you pull it tight is that nice drop shot knot that puts the hook out at a great angle. So your tag end that is um, upwards of the point is going to go to your main line or a braid and then the tag end downwards of your loop of your um, knot is going to um, have your weight on and then to hook the lure you've got a couple of options here you can just nick it right through the end like so and what that does it gives it maximum of movement so when you twitch that rod tip that's given loads of movement to the lure Alternatively, if they're just nipping the end of it, you can thread it on a little bit. 
you can take your, like you would a normal jig, thread it on, down the center of the lure, come out like that, thread it down your hook, and you can actually cover the eye up with the plastic, like so. And it sits up right, perfectly like that on the lure, on the line. So once you've got your, uh, your lure on the hook, it's a case of putting a drop shot weight on. And you can adjust the, uh, adjust the length that you want the, the hook off the bottom, the lure off the bottom, by just adjusting that weight and pulling it tight. And there you have it. Another great option, and something a little bit different to what most people do, is fishing a creature bait on the back of a bladed jig. It can be deadly method for pike. So as you can see here, I've got a full-size critter, and what I've done is just taken, taken about 10 mil, 15 mil off the back of it, so it sits nicely on the, uh, on the skirt and on the uh, bladed jig here. So we'll just peel that skirt back. And uh, we'll thread it on like a normal jig. So work out where it's going to come out. Again, somewhere near that shoulder. I'm just going to feed that on. Come out. You've got a nice little hook uh, lure keeper on these. And just push that on. And there you go. And that sits just like that. And then when your skirt comes back down, adds loads of attraction. And these have got everything going for them. You've obviously got a lovely vibration from the, the blade at the front. And when they pause, that skirt opens up like that and puffs that right out in the water. And then obviously you've got the, the, the critter's um, claws at the back here swimming away. And it's just a totally different profile from, from a shad or anything else that's used on them and can trick these weary, weary pike. Right, so I want to talk about retrieve right now. We're going to talk about the Cheb, Texas, and normal jig in one, really, because the retrieve rates are very similar. So we'll, we'll just cast this out. And one of the most important things with any of these retrieve rates is keeping in contact with the lure. So you need to use the right weight to um, get the lure down to the deck. And once it does get down, the best thing to do is let it pause. And once you've let it pause, just give it, what I like to do is give it a little wind and a twitch keeping the rod at about a 45 degree angle. That way, when it pauses, and if you get a bite, you've got room to strike. So we'll do that again, just wind and twitch, and then let it pause, it's hit the bottom. So let it pause for a little bit, then wind and twitch, hit the bottom, let it pause, and, and repeat that. And that goes for all those three, like I said, normal jig, Texas, and um, fishing like a cheb, it's all the same. The only thing with the Texas weight is, you do get a little bit of separation. If you don't peg the weight, you get a little bit of separation between the lure and the, um, and the weight, which is really good if you want to leave like, a longer pause and it floating sort of just mid-water. The other retrieve we can use is just a drag. So I'll just cast that back out. So again, let it go to the bottom, make sure you feel it down, make sure it hits the bottom. Once it does, a bit deeper there with her, you can literally just lift the rod in a really slow drag and then just pause it. Wind down so it's tight again and then just drag it back. So now the two retrieves I mainly use. And with the drop shot, you can really, really slow it down. So you can fish that drop shot any length you want off the bottom. By keeping the rod tip up high or low, you can alter that at the same time. And basically, you just can let the weight go down and just hold it and just give it little tiny twitches. You can move it fast if you like, but generally I'd use it when it's a little bit slower and you want a bit of a slower retrieve. And you'll see in the footage that it just looks absolutely amazing in the water, just all these lovely slow movements. Um, another tip is to put a rattle inside it and do that. And that's a great Xander bait then. But yeah, the critter is a really universal bait that can be fished any method you want. Well, hopefully you've picked up loads of tips that you can put into your own fishing that will help put more fish on the bank for you. I've done really well on the critters lately, and I'm sure you will too. 
Don't forget to subscribe to Fox Rose TV so you can get notifications for future videos.